So then let's get into gaming. This week, the layoffs continue with multiple new developments on that front. Plus, YouTube is apparently stealing ideas from Elon Musk. We're gonna get into that as well. Welcome, nerds, to this week's edition of the Gaming and Tech News, generally speaking. Now, I'm no Linus or Spawnwave or Gamers Nexus or insert channel that is dedicated to the tech and gaming news here. That's not what you're getting here. This is just enough to keep you informed, generally speaking. We do this just about every week as part of a larger news show called The Week in Nerddom over on the main channel. You can find that linked down in the description or at the end of this video. Now let's talk about some gaming and tech and maybe even some like photo video kind of news as well. We once again have no follow-ups or corrections, so we're just gonna get into the regular news. Gaming and tech this week, we have some interesting stuff going on. First up on that list is Bungie. Bungie is cutting 17% of their workforce, or has cut 17% of their workforce, which equates to roughly 220 employees. Technically, I think this is Sony coming in and saying, hey, you guys aren't making us any money, you're gonna have to do something. And so Bungie says, okay, let's fire people, because that seems to be the way of things anymore. So CEO of the company, Pete Parsons, has attributed this layoff to poor sales, which in turn means that the, 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 the fans are to blame, right? Is that how that goes? So the fans aren't buying what they're selling, so they have to make cutbacks because obviously it's the fans' fault that they're not buying what they're saying, selling. And then the fans' response was, actually, no, it's because you guys have made it a point to virtue signal for the last eight years, and we don't really care to listen to anyone just virtue signal constantly, so that's why we lost interest in your stuff. So, yeah, it's their fault. I mean, I don't, like... It sucks that the industry is in the situation it's in, that so many companies have had to lay, that have had to lay off so many people. But that's also kind of speaking to the idea of, you can only grow so much, and you can only grow so fast. And we were in a situation a few years back where everyone experienced insane amounts of growth, at least on the tech side of things, because that was all people could interact with. So of course they expanded. Of course there was a lot more influx of eyes getting onto the content for these certain things. But like, <laughs> the fact that nobody took into consideration the, the idea of, well, this is temporary. We should maybe plan for the future when this goes away. Because, I mean, yes, it's very difficult to read how, because we were in a super unique situation as far as the world is concerned, but it, it could not have been a long-term thing. There is no way that that was going to last forever, let alone for, you know, a decade or anything resembling that. So it's hard to be sympathetic at this point especially when you are talking about a company that has decided that it's better to make something where you can virtue signal, where you can just show everybody, look at how amazing we are because we follow your rules. Instead of giving you quality gameplay and quality content to go through, like, I, I, at a certain point, like, the, to, to, to quote Tim Pool, you voted for this, so it's your own fault. Like, this is, I can't, you stood by and let this happen. So I don't, I don't, I don't have sympathy. Let's move on. All right. So from there we have Dead by Daylight has announced the new Castlevania DLC, and we've got some interesting stuff in this as well. Not the least of which being you can now have Dracula as the killer and Trevor Belmont as a survivor. Dracula's abilities is he has three different forms he can shape shift into from his human form. I'm sorry, two that he can into from his human form. So three counting human or vampire, whatever you want to call it. Uh, bat and wolf, each with its own separate abilities. And powers as such, the vampire form is, he can cast hellfire spells, he has perks, he can, like hex and dominance. Trevor Belmont has eyes of Belmont to see the killer's aura, so you can see where he's been, maybe not where he is exactly. Uh, Exaltation, which is an item, upgrade item rarity, so you can make things, find things more rare and Moment of Glory for automatic healing. So it's 
pretty freaking cool. Castlevania DLC is sure to do well on this game because Castlevania is a pretty good franchise. So just saying. Will be released August 27th and will be adding a new layer of horror and excitement to the game according to them. So yes, pretty exciting there. Let's uh, go from a really cool thing to a not so cool thing. We have Game Informer shutting down just Overnight, there were future plans in place for at least the next three months of issues. So next three issues, there were stories submitted, etc., 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 and then GameStop just decided that they didn't want Game Informer around anymore, basically, and they shut shut it down. So let's get into the details here. Very little is still known about the previous the reasoning behind this closing of the doors. Very much worth noting that Game Informer was the longest run video game oriented publication around. They have been operating for 33 years. This is, again, just more layoffs. The, the story of layoffs continues. Game Informer, there is still, the archive is still up online and that very, or not the archive, but previous articles and stuff still exist online. There's just not gonna be anything new. And then we have glimmer of hope as far as the archiving of the previous issues and such. The independent outlet MinMax is organizing an archival project in order to save what exists of the, the magazine. So that's pretty, freaking cool i will i don't have the the link in the description right now but i will try and get that before i publish so that's what we got on that one and then our final piece of regular ass news for gaming and tech is youtube related youtube is apparently stealing ideas from x and more specifically elon musk because he owns x and He's the one that implemented this, as far as I understand it, on X. But uh, YouTube is going to be implementing community notes on videos. Uh, so they're inviting select users to test this new feature. It is designed to help identify misinformation. So the, the really tricky part about this is YouTube is a very biased organization, right? You have somebody who let's how are we going to say this all right so you have somebody on the platform like steven crowder i'm just going to say his name you have somebody on a platform like steven crowder who by youtube's own admission does not break their rules but they still find stupid reasons excuses loopholes what have you in order to copyright strike him to do what they can to take that channel down they have again recently taken that that channel down because of reasons honestly they they listed a couple of videos and they listed bullying and things and they couldn't give ex specific examples and one of the videos is over a year old and it still got it got strikes so the the issue the worry here is the select users that they're using this with right now in order to to test the community guideline or community notes thing are they going to be people who are going to just correspond with the youtube narrative the things that youtube wants us to see or are they going to be people who are honest and who use actual facts and and things to back up the reasons why they're community noting certain things like this is going to be a very sticky situation. Like it's kind of, because it's so democratized on X, I think that's one of the biggest benefits to it existing on X. Also, the nature of the platform is dramatically different because it's still, even though like they are kind of turning a focus onto video content and such on X, like it's still largely a text-based platform. So when you have community notes also in a text style, like it kind of makes sense. It makes things a lot more easy, easily accessible. YouTube has tried things like this in the past. Facebook has tried things like this in the past where they had a board effectively that would link to, and specifically during the times of the coup, they would link to articles or they would link to things that would support their arguments. And a lot of those articles at this point, we now know to be false. A lot of the information that they were pushing, we now know to be false. So is this going to be a perpetuation of that cycle or have they learned from their poor choices <laughs> and, are, and they're moving forward in a better direction? I don't think it's going to be the latter. I think it's going to be more of the former. Like that's just, that's just 
past examples kind of dictate that that's the direction they're headed. So very, very worrisome. This, this beta, effectively what they're doing, this beta rollout is obviously going to eventually roll out platform wide, though there is no timeline that they're giving for that. So that's again what we have for regular ass news in gaming and tech. Let's talk about suggestions for gaming and tech. X Defiant is our suggestion for the week. I just, if you need a break from your main game, X Defiant is a free to play FPS. You've got a little bit of the Mercs versus Spies from, the, what is it, Splinter, Splinter Cell back in the day. There's a lot more factions involved than just those two anymore, but you still get those elements and that was some of the best arena style FPS stuff around. Outside of Halo, because I'm a big Halo fan, Though that community is going through a whole different situation right now. Watch Mint Blitz's channel if you want to know what I'm talking about. But X Defiant is doing some really interesting stuff. So go check out X Defiant. That is your gaming suggestion for the week. That brings us to the end of the video, nerds. Thank you very much for joining me for the news. Once again, there is a full and probably much more up-to-date and recent episode of the news, the full-length version, if you will, called The Week in Nerdom over on the main channel, linked down in the description and probably link popping up somewhere around my face right about now. So click on that, go check that out as well. Or if you prefer your news in more truncated pieces, then by all means, just stick around here and go check out some of the other stuff we offer on this channel. Thank you very much for joining me. We will see you in the next one. Before we go, always, always remember, nerds, that if it is generally nerdy, it's probably here.